Hello guys and welcome back to Grabs Gas, a series where we take a look at the worst and most embarrassing MLB plays throughout the last week. And thankfully the baseball gods have given us some great content this week. But what were the most embarrassing and the worst, most tragic plays over the last week? We'll watch till the end for all the greatest and I guess worst moments. And make sure you hit that subscribe button to the Sportsnet YouTube channel for the best sports coverage around. And without further ado, let's get into the gaffes post trade deadline. <laughs> Now, one of my early favorites this season and really this week that I had to share. I mean, the Nats have had a couple of uh, interesting weeks, of course, trading Juan Soto and Josh Bell to the San Diego Padres. But there was almost an immediate, immediate gaffe right afterwards. And it's just summing up the entire franchise at this point. He's the one who said efforting the oh. information. <laughs> Marte lines when it's dropped. Are they going to say no catch and then it's thrown away? Vargas caught it, dropped it, threw it away, and the Mets wind up with runners at second and third. Wow. Now you can't catch it and drop it on purpose in that situation. The third base umpire, David Rackley, immediately said that he did not drop it on purpose. So Vargas picked it up, trying to get the force at second, and fired it into right field. And had plenty of time to turn to. All the runners stopped, because your immediate reaction is, okay, it's caught on a fly. And particularly watch Marte. He gets off his, he stops. And that's a normal reaction. Easy double play. And you got a youthful error. He had all day to throw that ball, but threw it about 15 feet wide. It's going to be an error all the way. Now the funniest part about this whole situation for Alamaro Vargas, for the third baseman for the Nationals, is that this was his first ever game in Washington. He was playing with the Cubs, and 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 now with Washington. And the fact that in his first ever game, an error like that happens is just spectacular, and it just shows how crazy baseball can be. So uh, Vargas making a great first impression, and a great first grab gaff. Now, just like the Nationals, the Milwaukee Brewers have not had the greatest last couple of weeks. I mean, they're four and six in their, pa in their past 10, and the division is now the Cardinals to be lost. And the way that this game ended between the Pirates didn't exactly make things better. Now, it was in extra innings, and the Brewers took the lead 4-3 off a hit by pitch, but then in the bottom of the temp, they blew that lead, and then this happened. One, two on Chavis. score and the Pirates walk off the Brewers for a second consecutive game this time it comes on a wild pitch in the bottom of the 10th well the Pittsburgh Pirates probably played one of their best series of the year sweeping the Brewers here at PNC And a walk-off wild pitch on a breaking ball. Caratini, that's a tough play for him. And the Pirates sweep the three-game series against Milwaukee. It's Reynolds who scores the game-winning run. He hit the home run yesterday. He drives in the tying run, scores the winning run on the wild pitch. I mean, if you're the Brewers, again, these last couple weeks have been horrendous, but to lose a game like that against the Pittsburgh Pirates? Usually it's the Pirates the, in the other side of things, the one making the wild pitch walk-off happen for the other team, not the other way around. Come on, Milwaukee, get it together. I mean, you're not, you're not close to Boston Red Sox territory, but... That's still pretty bad. But for Matt Bush, Texas Rangers legend, the graph gaff is absolutely deserved. <laughs> what a horrible time to have that bad of a wild pitch happen. Just amazing timing and a legendary grab gaff. Now, one of my favorite grab gaffs over the past week came in a Mets and, <laughs> and Braves in the Mets and Braves series, and it's just a small little moment that, in my opinion, just makes baseball so special. I want you to watch because, again, you're never going to expect what happens here. Three run advantage. Oh crap! Oh. Wow, the ball boy ran behind home plate to, Scherzer's about to throw it. pick up the stuff in the Mets on deck circle. So Max Scherzer's going for the windup. He's about to let that ball be launched, and then the ball boy just goes, "Woo!" Just 
just way, way overdoing it. I mean, he's obviously trying to run a marathon, but seriously, like, I don't, I, the, the thought process of the ball boy... So just just start running once Max Scherzer is about to let the ball go. I mean, imagine if Scherzer didn't even notice and just let that go and the catcher uh, didn't even notice and then and he just gets planked in the background. I mean, seriously, to, to also do that to Max Scherzer, one of the one of the greats, one of the legends in, in baseball today. I mean, I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want that ball boy to lose his job, but also, like, if you're gonna upset Max Scherzer like that, you're gonna be a part of the Grav Gaffs. But guess what? It would not be a Grav Gaffs without something Boston Red Sox related. This time with Jaron Duran, who is proving to be one of the worst fielders in the entire game right now, had himself one of the craziest innings you will ever see. One, two. Popped him up. Duran coming in and oh he lost it again run around a second on his way into third the throw is not in time Duran initially he put the hand up a little bit high fly ball right center Duran racing to the track he is there leaping up and cannot make the play deem himself there but it's another triple And probably open up some eyes in that Royals uh... center field again. Duran on the move, dives to make the play. He appears to be going back and forth with fans out there. He is. So let's just recap this seventh inning by Jaron Duran. <laughs> in the first first play that he needed to make, it was straight at center, giving me Fenway vibes and, and the vibes of him missing that ball all, all those weeks ago. But he was right at center, looking straight at it, had his glasses on, ready to go, and just completely... It, 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 it just, just doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen. It's right next to him, and he fails to do it. And then the very next play, he runs right to the wall, trying to make this big, leaping grab it hits the tip of his glove goes right off it and and disaster strikes but then he's able to redeem himself and the ending making a spectacular amazing diving catch and then just immediately starts crap talking the Kansas City Royals crowd now if you watched after that second play where he tried to make that big lunging grab there were I guess maybe Royals fans chirping him for not making the grab but you're Jaron Duran you kind of just suck in the MLB like I'm sorry to say it like those Royals fans probably have a point if that's what they're talking about. But also, like, it just, just, just in this sense, if, if you're Jaron Duran, so, crap talking after you made one good play after all the plays that you made this year, it's a grab gap in my opinion. And but to be honest, I mean, Jaron Duran is is just giving us so much content, so I can't even be mad. Now, speaking of great content, let's go on to the Padres and Dodgers series, highly anticipated, especially after the huge moves in Juan Soto, Josh Bell, and others that the San Diego Padres made. The Bell, the Ball, the two best teams battling it out. Supposedly, it ended up being a Dodger sweep, but there were quite a few gaff moments from the San Diego Padres. This first one for Manny Machado was amazing. Bouncing ball off Machado. Betts heads for third. Turner heads for second. Betts going halfway up the line, drawing the throw. He'll retreat. Boy, it's shocking. Anytime you see Manny Machado miss play a ball. Ever since he hurt his ankle, it has affected his hitting, and maybe it's affecting a little bit of his fielding. He is kind of gimpy as he runs out after that ball after he missed it. Put it on. Well, Trey Turner was awesome in running the bases here. No assumption in his world. As he watched Mookie advance, he made sure he advanced to second. And this play is just so legendary. The fact that it goes off Machado, Machado's glove so, so brilliantly to where it just skids right into the middle outfield where nobody's able to get it and you just see Mookie best knowing what he needs to do, rounding all the way past third and, and also... 
looking like you want to go home as well on that thing. I mean, Manny Machado has made some amazing plays. He's made some amazing plays this week, last week, but uh, not one of his finer moments for sure. Now we got some more Padres content. This time, though, it didn't go against them. And, and I'll just say on this clip, I mean, Juan Soto does the impossible. Even the balls that should be out every single time, he manages to get something out of it. Fly ball to right center field. Back goes Daza. He'll have room. And they drop the ball. Soto's headed for third base. He'll get there. Blackman, Daza, I got it. You take it. No, neither of us will. And it's just wonderful trying to watch Charlie Blackman play defense in right field. He called for it and didn't call for it. And then they, and they were just tangled all together trying to get this ball uh, uh, together. And it's just, oh, it just reminds me of the little league days so, so effortlessly. I mean, obviously, I wasn't the person in right field when those plays happened. Duh. I mean, I'm the best fielder of all time. But... <laughs> It's just, it just reminds me of when you're eight years old and you see a fly ball go right to center field. Nobody has any communication whatsoever. Goes right between them. But let's be honest, Juan Soto probably knew in his mind to do that and distract everybody in the outfield. So you can't even be mad if you're Colorado. I'm sorry. But then let's go on to another Padres grab gap. This time, though, a little bit more against them. This was a crazy sequence where the Padres were down 1-0. There was supposedly the tying run coming to the plate. And I don't want to spoil much, so I'll just let you watch. Line to fair ball down the left field line to the corner. Brandon Drury racing around. They're going to try and score him. Here comes the throw from Crawford, and he is safe. Wow, this was close. Initially, I thought Drury got his hand in. San Francisco is challenging the safe call. Let's see if he gets his hand three. down. Boy, that's close. Review the call on the field is overturned. The runner is out. And then more stuff coming out now. Baseballs, I believe. And Mike Yastrzemski kind of walking away from that situation, but they're coming out. Yeah, and, and that ain't. So to break everything down, again, they were down 1 0. Coming right to the plate was Brandon Jury. Initially, it was called safe by the umpire, but again, after review, it was waved off, it was cleared off, it was called out. And then immediately afterwards, Padres fans start throwing stuff on, onto the field, which is insane, especially after their last week. I mean, imagine you're the Padres, you go through all these trades and to see how it's worked out. It's not been the most uh, promising offensive week for the Padres, but that type of play just puts the salt in the wound. And speaking of salt in the wound, Padres fans, do not look at this next tweet. This is from MLB Errors. The Padres haven't scored in 23 innings. 23 innings. But let's not kid ourselves here. This Padres roster before the trade deadline should have been embarrassed, bamboozled by the fact that they have not scored in 23 innings. Let alone a Padres lineup with healthy Machado, healthy Juan Soto, healthy almost everybody besides Tatis Jr. I mean, the fact that this Padres roster, after all these deals, is doing this 23 innings. I mean, I know the Dodgers just 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 crapped on him, but seriously, this is an extra level of disappointment already. And I just gotta say, if the Padres do keep this going, if they make all these moves and just end up floundering in this second half, and even if they make the playoffs, just completely crumbling, I mean, how bad do those trade deadline deals make? How, I mean, just all the deals by themselves, not even just Juan Soto. They gotta change something quick, cause it's obviously not working out. And it's funny because I know just a few days ago I praised the Padres for making all those crazy moves in the trade deadline, but baseball changes a lot in a few days time. So they are your grab calf champions of this week in the San Diego Padres. Just legendary performances time and time again. But let me know in the comments down below what you guys thought this last week. Do we miss any horrible worst MLB plays? Let me know in the comments down below. Of course, share this video with your friends. Get it to all the baseball fans you guys know online. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. And I will see you in next week's grab gaffs and grab slam.
Rams, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.